Beneath California, Sacramento, San Joaquin Delta, engineers are planning to bore a 45-mile tunnel that will reach depths of 150 feet below ground, making it the deepest major tunnel anywhere in the United States. The current record holder, Boston's Ted Williams Tunnel, sits at just 90 feet underground. Now one thing needs clarifying right away. This tunnel will transport water that originates from Sierra Nevada snowmelt, but the tunnel itself doesn't actually pass through those mountains. The route runs under flat delta wetlands east of San Francisco, and what California is attempting here pushes against the outer limits of engineering possibility. $20.1 billion is the official price tag, making this one of the largest infrastructure projects in American history. The numbers alone tell you this is no ordinary construction job. 45 miles stretches longer than both the Channel Tunnel connecting England to France and Switzerland's famous Gotthard Base Tunnel, which measure 31.4 miles and 35.5 miles, respectively. Starting near the small town of Hood, population just 271, the tunnel will terminate at Bethany Reservoir near Tracy. Internal diameter comes in at 36 feet, which dwarfs typical rail tunnels that range from 25 to 31 feet across. The boring machines themselves measure approximately 40 feet in diameter to accommodate 18-inch thick concrete lining throughout the entire length. Between four and six of these machines will chew through the earth, each one powered by roughly 20,000 horsepower. 14 million cubic yards of earth will come out of the ground during construction, a volume comparable to the 17.4 million cubic yards extracted during the Gothard Base Tunnel project. When water finally flows through this underground conduit, capacity will reach 6,000 cubic feet per second, which translates to approximately 3,879,000,000 gallons every single day. Three separate threats are driving this project, and each one could cripple California's water supply on its own. Climate change sits at the top of the list. California built its water infrastructure around a predictable pattern of Sierra Nevada snowmelt that released water gradually through spring and summer months. That pattern is breaking down. Precipitation now arrives in violent atmospheric river storms that overwhelm existing capture systems. And here's a number that shows exactly what's being lost. During the atmospheric river storms of January and February 2024, an additional 956,000 acre-feet of water could have been captured if this tunnel existed. Nearly 10 million Californians could live for an entire year on that amount, but instead, it flowed straight to the ocean. Carla Nemeth, director of the California Department of Water Resources, frames the problem this way. Climate is creating a system that will grow much flashier in the future, and California doesn't have the capability or the luxury of maintaining a system that can't divert water when conditions turn wet. Earthquake vulnerability presents the second threat and some engineers consider it the most alarming of all. Over 1,000 miles of aging levees protect the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, and this region sits in one of North America's most seismically active zones. Scientists put the probability of a magnitude 6.7 or greater earthquake striking the Bay Area within 20 years at 72%. A major quake breaching those levees would send saltwater rushing in from San Francisco Bay, contaminating freshwater supplies for months or even years. Officials have described this scenario as the largest catastrophe that could strike any water system in America. Running 100 to 150 feet below ground in stable geological formations, the tunnel would provide a protected pathway that surface disasters couldn't touch. Graham Bradner, executive director of the Delta Conveyance Design and Construction Authority, doesn't mince words about the current situation. The existing system carries mounting risks and the state water project elements in the Delta have no resiliency built into them. A system is only as strong as its weakest link, and in his view, this is exactly that weak link. The third factor comes down to pure numbers. Two-thirds of California's water flows through the Delta after originating from Sierra Nevada precipitation. About 27 million Californians, roughly two-thirds of the state's entire population, depend on state water project deliveries passing through this single vulnerable choke point, along with 750,000 acres of farmland. Governor Gavin Newsom has called this the most important climate adaptation project in the United States of America. 
Tunneling beneath Delta wetlands sounds like a nightmare scenario, and the upper geological layer confirms those fears. From the surface down to about 50 or 60 feet, you find peat, loose sands, clays, and silts, material that couldn't possibly support tunnel construction. But here's where the project becomes feasible. Below that problematic zone, at the depths where boring will actually occur, lies what geologists call older alluvium, dense silty clay, and silty sand mixed with gravel that has compressed over thousands of years. Dr. Greg Corbin has worked on major tunneling projects, including BART, the Port of Miami Tunnel, and Seattle's SR-99 Tunnel, and he describes this deeper material as actually ideal for an earth pressure balance type machine. That assessment transforms the entire project outlook. Earth pressure balance tunnel boring machines represent the current pinnacle of soft ground tunneling technology. These machines control ground pressure with precision as they excavate, preventing surface subsidence or collapse. Seattle's SR99 project proved what this technology can do when a 57.5 foot diameter machine, larger than anything planned for California, passed beneath more than 300 high rise buildings without causing any damage at all. Chief Engineer Steve Manassian brings three decades of experience from projects including the Lake Mead Tunnel and Port of Miami Tunnel. His connection to this work runs deep, and he's described what it feels like to stand near an operating tunnel, boring machine. When he enters the tunnel near the machine, he actually feels more at home than he does in his own house. These machines generate close to 20,000 horsepower, and that power clearly captivates him. One hazard lurks beneath the surface that few people consider. Extensive networks of natural gas wells crisscross the delta, some of them abandoned and poorly documented. Engineers have plotted the tunnel route to avoid known wells, but the boring machines will carry automatic shutdown systems in case they encounter an unmapped one. Such an encounter would cause significant delay while crews properly abandon the well. Despite removing 14 million cubic yards of earth, Engineers say people living above the tunnel route will barely notice construction happening beneath them. Dan Adams, president of Macmillan Jacobs Associates, has stated that residents shouldn't expect noise of any kind out in the delta while the tunnel boring machine passes below. The design includes 11 shafts for launching and receiving the boring machines, for maintenance access, and for surge control. Two T-shaped underwater intakes on the Sacramento River will draw water into the system each one featuring fish screens stretching over 1,300 feet long. Nearly four football fields, designed to prevent endangered delta smelt, Chinook salmon, and steelhead from getting pulled into the tunnel. A project this size was never going to escape opposition, and the Delta Conveyance Project has generated resistance from multiple directions. Environmental groups argue that already struggling fish populations face even greater threats from this tunnel. Research cited by opponents shows juvenile Chinook salmon mortality rising rapidly when delta flows drop below 35,000 cubic feet per second. Yet critics claim the tunnel targets minimum flows of just 10,000 cubic feet per second. Scott Artis of the Golden State Salmon Association offered a blunt assessment, calling this project an extinction plan for salmon. Barbara Berrigan Perilla, executive director of Restore the Delta, believes tunnel operation would fundamentally transform Delta hydrology. She's described the operation as a very fast death blow to the Delta because it would change the natural hydrology so significantly. And here's the thing, she also challenges the earthquake justification directly, pointing out that fixing a levee after a catastrophe is much easier than repairing a tunnel. Local communities will bear heavy costs during construction. Approximately 3,800 acres of farmland will disappear into the project footprint and the 13-year building process will disrupt a $250 million recreation industry. Generational farms dating back to the 1870s face uncertain futures. Virginia Hemley Chabra, a sixth-generation Delta Pear farmer, put the threat in stark terms. The tunnel is like dropping a bomb on the North Delta, with parts experiencing very quick death, while other parts endure a long, slow death of a thousand cuts. Cost estimates have sparked their own battle. Official projections hold at $20.1 billion, but independent analyses paint a different picture. Oxford Global Projects predicted in November 2025 that real costs would reach $27 to $32 billion, with construction stretching beyond 25 years. 
Testimony from Eco Northwest in July 2025 pushed estimates even higher, suggesting the project could ultimately cost $60 to $100 billion, which would be three to five times the official figure. Historical patterns support the skeptics. Median water tunnel projects exceed initial estimates by 34%. Congressman Josh Harder, who represents Stockton and surrounding Delta communities, has made his position unmistakably clear. Zero federal dollars should go to this terrible project, and he'll fight tooth and nail to stop what he calls a disaster from moving forward. Delta communities stand united in opposition to this water grab, and they'll keep using every avenue possible to stop Sacramento from stealing their water and shipping it down to Beverly Hills. Ten major lawsuits currently challenge the project, filed by all five Delta counties, the City of Stockton, environmental organizations including the Sierra, Club and Friends of the River, and tribal organizations including the Shingle Springs Band of Miwok Indians and the Winamem Wintu Tribe. The project has cleared several major hurdles, but significant obstacles remain. December 2023 brought certification of the final Environmental Impact Report, a document spanning more than 27,000 pages. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife issued an incidental take permit in February 2025, covering 11 protected species. In October 2025, saw the Court of Appeal reverse preliminary injunctions that had blocked geotechnical fieldwork. What hasn't been resolved tells the other half of the story. Water rights hearings that began in February 2025 won't conclude until sometime in 2026. Federal Endangered Species Act Biological opinions remain pending, along with Clean Water Act permits from the Army Corps of Engineers and the State Water Board. The funding question looms largest of all. January 20-24 brought a court ruling that the Department of Water Resources lacks authority to issue $16 billion in revenue bonds needed to finance construction. That ruling sits under appeal, representing a major barrier to moving forward. June 2025 delivered another setback when the state legislature rejected Governor Newsom's proposal to fast-track the project through the state budget, voting 3-0 to zero with one abstention. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, serving 19 million people as the largest project beneficiary, has already committed $161 million to planning and purchased four Delta Islands for $175 million in anticipation of construction. The current timeline, Project's Water District decisions on full construction funding in 2027, construction beginning in 2029, and operational status by 2045, roughly 20 years from now. Graham Bradner offered a candid assessment when asked whether he's confident the tunnel will actually be built. His answer was revealing, more of a hope than a confidence. California is confronting one of the defining challenges of this century adapting aging infrastructure to a changing climate while balancing competing needs against limited resources. The engineering case holds up under scrutiny. 45 miles of tunnel, 36 feet in diameter, running up to 150 feet below ground, moving 6,000 cubic feet of water per second. The technology exists, and the threats to water reliability and earthquake preparedness are real. Whether the project should be built involves questions that engineering alone can't answer. Environmental impacts, who benefits versus who pays, whether $20 billion or $60 billion or $100 billion might achieve more through alternatives like water conservation, groundwater recharge, or wastewater recycling. These questions demand answers that blueprints can't provide. What nobody disputes is that California's water future can't depend on the current system. Those 1,000 miles of aging levees protecting the Delta represent exactly the kind of vulnerable infrastructure that climate change and seismic risk are making untenable. The Delta Conveyance Project may or may not reach completion. Lawsuits, funding challenges, and political opposition keep the outcome genuinely uncertain. But the debate itself about water, about infrastructure, about adaptation is one that California and the entire American West can no longer put off. If you want to stay informed on massive engineering projects like this one, Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We cover the biggest infrastructure stories from around the world, and there's plenty more coming your way.